we do a lot of reading here in the theology department. We, we write, we read, we talk. Uh, and uh, one issue is we keeping each other in contact on what books are read and what books aren't read. Maybe books that deserve to be read but aren't getting the attention they deserve. So uh, my nomination uh, for that category would be uh, this book uh, by David Kelsey. It's called Eccentric Existence. Um, David Kelsey is uh, an emeritus professor of theology at, uh, at Yale Divinity School, and he's been working on this uh, uh, eccentric existence of theological anthropology for a very long time. Now, the book has been given some attention. Modern Theology did a series of reviews on it, and other books have been reviewing it. But it, it actually doesn't make it difficult. to. The book itself isn't uh, easy to pay attention to, because I only have one volume of two volumes. It's a thousand pages long. A thousand pages. So uh, it's understandable why people might hesitate to uh, to give it attention. Uh, 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 Professor Kelsey helps himself out a lot by having two chapters on almost every topic. One is a kind of general treatment of that topic, and the other one is a specialized treatment for academics. And so it kind of cuts the book in half. It's only 500 pages long, if you want to take it that way. You know, but even 500 pages is extraordinarily long. Um, what makes it worth paying attention to. I think what makes it worth paying attention to are two things. Uh, it's what eccentric existence, Kelsey argues, is all about. Uh, eccentric existence is, first of all, an existence that is construed as a response to the triune God. So it's very Trinitarian book. Mm. And uh, putting theological anthropology, which is to say our views on what human persons are and should be, uh, before the triune God, and thinking out human beings before the triune God, it seems to me, is, is really makes this a worthwhile book. Uh, the second thing is that the way he thinks about human persons, and he's thoroughly conversant, particularly with scriptures, but, but also with the tradition, and, and certainly with contemporary philosophical theology on, on the issues of the person, um, uh, it, it talks about persons as creatures, as, as reconciled creatures, and as reconciled creatures who are on the way to conservation, and he intriguingly argues that there's no single narrative to that. There's a, there's a sort of singleness to God's one in threeness. But um, he says he doesn't have a way of holding together those three narratives. The narratives of us as creatures, as reconciled sinners, and as those heading towards some sort of uh, final consummation. And so the result is he lays down a real challenge, I think, in front of theologians in terms of thinking about embodied human persons in the world and, and what it means to think that way and what sort, of, what sort of contribution theology can make to the broader discussion in other disciplines about human persons. So it's, uh, it's, it's a, a large book. Uh, it's being paid attention to. Uh, I hope it keeps being paid attention to, but even more, despite its length.